A lot of requests to do a video on the various methods to clean up AC from uh, surge protectors to filters to power cords. So today I thought I'd do a video on, on uh, this device from PS Audio called the Noise Harvester uh, AC Cleaner. And uh, it's a little device, it looks a little bit larger than an um, AC uh, charger via phone. Uh, it has no connections other than a couple of AC prongs, so you just plug it into an AC outlet that uh, is next to the whatever is powering the rest of your audio equipment. And uh, as a parallel device, it's supposed to filter out uh, that noise. Uh, it costs $99. And uh, if you read the description, um, it says that it uh, collects the noise um, from the AC line and then it discharges it into a, this little LED light over here that will blink every time it's finished charge, uh, charging that, basically collecting that much noise, it discharges it. Um, a little puzzled, somebody would say that's a good thing because whenever you do a sudden thing, that can cause more uh, uh, disturbance to a circuit than a gradual one. Um, so the and that LED blinks pretty fast, many times a second. So uh, you know if this thing is aiming to do its job gently, uh, I don't know that that's the right thing. But it's a masterful uh, marketing in that a lot of times these filters you can't see them do anything, and you have to take it on faith that they're doing something. This one actually has a light; it's reassuring, and uh, it blinks and tells you that it's getting rid of some noise that it's collecting. It does run warm, by the way, so. It's doing something and it's using power. So uh, many times people say, well, these devices can't be measured. This one actually is pretty easy to measure. Um, the filtering that it has is independent of voltage. Uh, it's a frequency domain filter, if you will. So I decided to treat it as if it's an audio device and uh, or generic filter. And I set up my audio precision either uh, having this input going through its output and just measuring itself with nothing in between, or sticking this device in the middle. And uh, by doing that, we can actually see what effect it has in the in a band that we're measuring. So the audio analyzer is set up to measure up to 200 kilos, so well above audible band to get you know measure what's happening above audible band if there's any truth to uh, stuff above 20 kilos mattering. I first measured the analyzer itself to make sure the cabling that I had for this fixture uh, doesn't affect anything, and indeed it doesn't. The other precision is just dead accurate from 0 to 200 kilohertz, no variation in frequency response. As soon as I plug in the uh, noise harvester, it actually makes quite a bit of difference. You can see that it uh, starts filtering around 500 hertz and it goes down uh, 20 dB or so. There's some peaking in here, there's a resonance probably. And uh, then it continues on filtering some more. So by 200 kilos, you have 40 dB of attenuation. So uh, I, this is shocking. Usually these things don't do anything at all. You can't measure them. And this one is measurable indeed. And uh, if you read the spec, it actually says that it filters from 500 there. So on, I forget where it says that. But uh, so it seems like there's some truth to what this device says it's doing. It's actually doing that. Uh, question is, does it matter? Um, you know, just because you filter things doesn't mean that you've done what needs to be done. So for the next measurement, I uh, take AC mains and uh, it's high voltage, obviously. You don't want to just bring that in and measure it. it blows up the analyzer. So I just put it in the step down transformer. And uh, then on the other side, it's the same. Uh, response more or less, but now it's noise, uh, it's lower voltage, so we can measure it. And uh, I zero out the uh, mains at 60 hertz, so this first spike that you see in here is is the only wanted thing. Uh, but then we see that the spectrum of of mains uh, uh, over here has got tons of distortion. Uh, power companies sine wave is clean, but it's not instrument grade clean. Uh, I can actually look at this uh, uh, distortion plus noise and it's almost 3%. So without plugging in the uh, noise harvester, that's what it is. I plug in the harvester, same percentage distortion. Why? Because if you look in here, what are the worst uh, spikes that we don't want out of our IC mains? Are these harmonics? 
Um, you know, this is 60 hertz is our main, then there's 180 hertz and, and so forth, odd harmonics. And none of these are filtered because as I showed you, this thing doesn't do any filtering until it gets to 500 hertz. So, but unfortunately for us, most of our problems are to 500 or 600 hertz. So where we care by cleaning things up, it doesn't clean. You might say, well, how about above that? Does it clean those? Well, if you squint, the red is with the harvester plugged in. You can see there's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of reduction, maybe. <laughs> but essentially, it let the bulk of all this garbage come through. Why? Because it's not capable of applying a lot of filtering. Uh, a paper towel can filter things if you pour water over it, but if I uh, throw rocks on it, it can't, can't handle that. So just because something's a filter doesn't mean it's able to filter anything you throw at it. It has to be designed for that application. And indeed, this thing is not able to take out all this energy. If it wanted to take out all of this energy, you could build such a filter. It would be expensive as heck, it would be large, it would be heavy, and chew up a lot of power, because there's a lot of power in here. But obviously, this little device can't do that. So um, from the point of view of, of what it thinks it's doing, it is doing that. But that little LED uses so little power that what it discharges after like, I don't know, one tenth of a second, it, you know, if it's just enough to light a little LED, that's not material amount of uh, noise to, uh, to get rid of. That, of course, assumes that this is what is in your audio equipment, it is not. We convert AC to DC and the first thing we do is filter the heck out of it. So inside the audio device, we don't see these things anyway. But uh, we'll get to actually testing real audio devices. But as far as the principle of what the device does and our testing methodology, 100% we're able to quantify and qu uh, this device, measure its effect, things that they should demonstrate and put up as evidence. We're able to do that, so there's no mystery in here. This is not like uh, interconnect or speaker cable where you can't measure anything, but it makes this run, uh, amazing improvements. Here, we can actually quantify 100% what the device does. Uh, it just doesn't seem like it's doing anything useful. If you look at the sine waves themselves, with or without the uh, um, the noise harvester, you can actually see that the sine wave is distorted. These tops over here are flattened. They're not a pure nice sine wave. So a lot of times distortion is too low to see their uh, see its effect in the time domain, which is what this is, the oscilloscope display. But here the RAC main is dirty enough that indeed we can see this distorted. And the red one, which is with uh, PS Audio, you can see it's the same thing. It, it's not able to change, you know, what's visibly distorted continues to be visibly distorted and um, visibly noisy. So all the stuff that they claim to have gotten rid of uh, is not visible in frequency domain, it's not visible in, in uh, time domain. Indeed, we see that the problem remains. But uh, let's uh, see what effect is on real devices. On AC mains, we, we measured some effect given how sensitive our instrumentation is. First test was my audio analyzer. Heck, if I can improve this performance, let's do that. So I have the audio precision plugged in and it's measuring itself and it's getting this incredibly good sign out of 123.5 dB. So it's a very zoomed scale. And I let it run over time. And you can see how stable, rock stable this analyzer is measuring itself. The two channels are red and blue. And then I plug in the noise harvester. And as soon as I plug it in, the light on it is blinking. So it's doing what it thinks it's doing. But can you even see a difference in the response of this analyzer? No, neither is generator nor is analyzer change one iota. If it had changed anything, we would see some, some indication something's happening here. And this is a sum of noise and distortion, and nothing's happened whatsoever. And I unplug it then, and we don't see an effect there either. So you might say, well, this is an expensive piece of equipment, so obviously it has very clean power. Let's look at consumer products. So at that time that I tested this, I had some other products on my desk. So this is a topping A90, it's a preamplifier, uh, headphone amp, and uh, it's a $500 device, so it's not $28,000. Again, the same test, and, and look at how good this device is, by the way. It's almost as good as my, essentially as good as my analyzer. And uh, plug it in, unplug, another darn thing happened. And it's a little box, so it's not some giant thing. 
so well maybe that's also too good let's go to something lower so at that time i had the nice jds labs atom deck it's a 99 dollar deck and right away, we see how sensitive this test is. Uh, this DAC by itself is actually changing its uh, noise profile and, and, and or distortion profile. So it does have something wrong with it, uh, if you will, though practically it's from 109 to 109.5. So definitely not a practical problem. But I'm just showing you the power of the instrumentation. If there's something there, this thing can tease it out. And it is indeed teasing it out. Unfortunately for PS Audio Noise Harvester, I'll plug it in. The same variations are there. I take it out, continues on as if nothing happened. And this thing has a little external um, uh, AC adapter that you plug in and, uh, and brings that AC into the device from what I recall. So if you cleaned up that AC, surely that makes a difference. It does not make a difference at all. And uh, there's always this, uh, well, I'll come back to that in a second. So um, then I, I uh, took a Shet Modi 2 Uber DAC. Uh, Shet these days makes extremely good devices, ex uh, good DACs and preamps and what have you. At the time, though, they had uh, a few years ago, they didn't have as good a product. So I use them as an example of something that is noisier and to not as much of a state of the art as the other products and see if they make a difference. And again, noise harvester plugged in unplugged even at 94 db where noise is an issue now um nothing happened but the ps audio harvester blinking saying i'm getting rid of noise for you i'm getting rid of stuff you don't want no um a lot of people who believe in these vices immediately say i don't care about these graphs i don't understand them anyway and they don't mean anything to you i use my ears well i have ears i <laughs> use my so I went ahead and uh, my RME ADI2 version, uh, ADI2 DAC, $1,000 uh, professional DAC. And uh, I used my Ether CX headphone and uh, I listened to my music and I would take the noise harvester, plug it in and unplug it, plug it in, unplug it. It's a beautiful thing as far as testing because you don't have to disturb your setup. It's just a thing you plug into the same AC outlet uh, adapter or power strip as your device. So it doesn't interrupt music. So if it's going to make a difference, it will be pretty easy to hear because it's instantaneous effect. And uh, there's absolutely no difference. There's none. I mean, this is revealing of a product uh, as a test as you can get. Uh, far more revealing than what a lot of people use for, excuse me, testing. And there wasn't any, anything else. So. Yes, people will say that it. as soon as they plug in, great things happen. Uh, some other uh, members sent me three of them once with one of his DACs uh, to test. And uh, I did very careful A-B tests with it at the time, too. And even three of them made no difference whatsoever. Um, so, but people say, well, everybody raves about these things. You're the only one who doesn't. I actually found a review of it online where this guy said it absolutely did nothing for him. You can go and, and uh, watch it. So it's not just me that says this, although this is an exception to a rule. Most people will get one of these things, plug it in, and then spend more time listening for differences. And when they do that, as I've explained in other videos, your brain changes mode of operation, starts to pay attention more, and it hears more detail, or hears more fidelity, basically, when you're paying attention than when you're in lean back enjoyment mode. And... Uh, Whenever you're testing something, you're not testing in the way you use it in the everyday music system. You're testing it in an analytical way with your ears and your mode of operation changes. And un unless you can hide whether the device is plugged in or not, you will get in this cadence of thinking, I plugged it in and I listened and I heard more detail when I unplug it. You're just going to program yourself into thinking that effect's gone. It's just hard to, yeah, I know everything about that effect, by the way, and I can't avoid it myself. So even I could fall victim to that. Knowledge of the phenomenon does not protect you uh, in that regard. So you've got to have somebody else plug and unplug it, have a loved one um, uh, sometimes plug it in, sometimes unplug it 10 nights in a row. When you come home, don't look, you know, have it be hidden that whether it's plugged in that you make a log of whether it's plugged in or not plugged in, plugged in or not plugged in. And your loved one will also make a log of whether they did or did not unplug it. And at the end of 10 days, compare notes. If you get 10 out of 10, I'll bow to your uh, abilities to hear supernatural things um, because 
there's basically nothing in here. So uh, bottom line, there is an element of truth to this device. It does what it does. The flaw in it is that it doesn't solve the problem. The problem with AC mains, if you're just using AC mains as is, is these spikes. In audio equipment, we don't deal with AC mains. We bring in AC, and the first thing we do is convert it to DC. And when we convert it to DC, we then filter it. If we don't filter it, it will actually be, not be a DC. So filtering is required to be part of DC. And many DACs and audio products have a switching power supply, and they convert it into DC, switch it to high frequency, and then convert it back to uh, uh, DC again. So you're so far removed from that process that you can tweak all you want in AC mains. Anybody designing audio equipment or any kind of electronics equipment knows that AC mains is dirty. So of course we don't, we know about this and we deal with it or we couldn't have performance this good out of a $500 device. If you allowed any of that 3% noise to come into this uh, amplifier, it just would destroy its performance. This amplifier, I guess, is fantastic performance because first thing it does is a filter and filtering is cheap. I mean, it's, you know, and by the way, filtering in DC at low voltage is dirt cheap. Try to filter mains at, you know, 150, 300 volts uh, or more peak voltage. It's extremely expensive. So why in the heck would you want to filter in AC domain? Of course, we're going to filter in DC domain because we have little voltage as a capacitor that's rated for 10 volts is a heck of a lot cheaper than a capacitor that's rated for 300 volts, 400 volts, 500 volts. And those caps can also be quite tiny, whereas the components that are used for high voltage are massive. You know, a small capa value capacitor at 400 volts, it'd be a giant thing. And so it's stupid to go and try to clean up AC. When we already cleaned up in DC, it's cheaper, easier, and it's already done for you. You don't need to spend a hundred dollars on this. Take the hundred dollars, go have a nice dinner with it, uh, buy some more music, um, something else to enjoy, then plug this in and watch the LED blink thinking, oh my god, it's improving my sound. It is not, even if you think it is improving your sound, that effect will wear off later on, and then you'll be out looking for that next tweak to get that high again that something's happening. Okay, that's all I have for you on this. I have other power product uh, videos coming, but uh, I thought we'd cover this little noise harvester. Okay, see you in the future video. Bye-bye.